thousands of years, all of these volcanoes across Indonesia have killed hundreds of thousands of people throughout their explosive histories. And that might make it seem like a pretty unattractive place to live. Yes, what am I fascinating? Come on, let's go. generating new opportunities in life through brief but awesome periods of natural destruction. Before the advent of industrial fertilizers in the 19th century, nearly all heavy farming and agriculture took place in high-risk, high-reward locations in either floodplains adjacent to rivers or in the cases of places like Indonesia, Japan, or Pompeii in southern Italy, volcanic soil adjacent to active volcanoes. Thus, with an abundant supply of very rich soil that is almost continuously re-fertilized with minerals by the many active volcanoes sprouting up from the subduction of the Indo-Australian plate beneath the Sunda plate, Java has always naturally been one of the most ideal locations in the world to produce a ton of food that can feed a ton of people long before the invention of industrial fertilizer was ever thought of. But rich soil is only a small part of the overall explanation. Java has many other geographic advantages towards food production as well. For one thing, the subduction of the Indo-Australian plate beneath the Sunda plate that gave birth to Indonesia's string of volcanoes here placed the islands they formed directly within the tropics very near to the equator, a region of the world that remains almost permanently warm all throughout the entire year, with little, if any, seasonal variation. And further, the island's location in between the larger continental landmasses of Asia in the north and Australia in the south directly exposes them to the seasonal patterns of rainfall brought about by the regional moist winds. Therefore, pretty much all of Indonesia's islands retain warm temperatures throughout the entire year and receive heavy amounts of rainfall throughout the entire year as well. And Java is no exception. Overall, these factors converge to mean that Java not only has rich and fertile volcanic soil, but also 
also a large, constant supply of fresh water through heavy rainfall and constantly warm temperatures all year round. The three perfect conditions required for massive food production through agriculture, and specifically rice production, which is the true source of Java's incredible population size. You see, rice contains many advantages for a growth-based civilization that other staple food crops do not, primarily because it contains a vastly higher concentration of energy. One acre of rice crops on a farm is capable of producing 11 million calories, compared to a measly 4 million calories for the same acre if its land were allocated instead of wheat. Therefore, one acre of rice can provide nearly the same amount of calories for a population as three acres of wheat can. And civilizations that grow rice can therefore sustain higher amounts of people on less available land than civilizations that grow wheat. But not everyone can just switch over to growing rice, because in order to successfully grow rice in any kind of large quantity, you need four vital things. Warm temperatures, a ton of water, fertile soils, and a large pool of available labor. When using traditional methods of agriculture, fire cannons, rice is considered the absolute most labor intensive of all staple crops to harvest. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, one acre of rice is approximately 198 to 395 man hours to harvest by hand without the use of any industrialized machines, compared to only 23 hours per acre of wheat. This means that under traditional pre-industrial methods, rice naturally requires a significantly larger labor pool of workers to harvest than wheat does, which naturally encourages larger populations and families of farmers, which is fine because rice can sustain nearly three times as many people per acre as wheat can. Ultimately, you can only see how rice farming actually encourages this sort of feedback. The more acres are dedicated to growing it, the more people it can feed, and the more people it requires for labor to continue harvesting it. And Java is one of the greatest locations in the entire world for the specific task of growing rice. Because of rice's harvesting season, it only takes roughly 120 days from the planting of a rice to the harvesting of a fully grown rice crop. And since Java has fertile soils, warm temperatures, massive rainfall, and a big population of available labor all throughout the year, every year, the Javanese have been capable of producing three crops of rice nearly every year for generations. And this is how the island is capable of supporting a truly massive number of people for its relatively small size. Not many other places in the world possess anywhere near Java's insane amounts of buffs towards food production. While substantially larger, both the islands of Borneo and New Guinea within the same Indonesian archipelago may get similar amounts of rainfall and high temperatures throughout the year as Java. But unlike Java, neither Borneo nor New Guinea contain even a single active volcano. Ordinarily, this would mean that with high amounts of rainfall over millennia, these islands' soils would be getting eroded and weathered away for a very long time. But Borneo and New Guinea soil are each normally protected from this by their dense and lush coverage of rainforests, in the sense that when plants die, they rapidly decompose and replenish the soils with their nutrients, enabling new plants to grow up in their place. But when humans come in and clear out the rainforests of all their plants to use the underlying land and soil as a farm, that natural cycle of the forest obviously ends up getting broken. And without any volcanoes or significant floodplains present, the soils have no other natural mechanism to replenish their nutrients from the constant rainfall-induced erosion. And that means farming will quickly deplenish the soils. And that is the primary reason why Borneo and New Guinea, despite being a lot larger than Java and being in a geographically similar location, cannot possibly sustain as large of a population. 
because historically, large scale agriculture on each of them has I'm pretty much been start. impossible. It's no surprise then that today, Java alone produces about 56% of all of Indonesia's rice and contains more than half of Indonesia's entire population.